Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content process and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is Business Process Management, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll discuss how business process and information management are so closely related and how process essentials can be abstracted from the technologies being used. Business reality is that process and information management are very closely related. Most processes exist to facilitate the transport of some form of content from point A to point B, and content without a means to get there is pretty well devoid of business value. So when considering changing one, it's important to consider the likely effects on the other at the same time. Let's look at a real-life example to bring this into focus. A long time ago, the way banks processed cash checks was as follows. A courier would ride around and collect the paper checks received by tellers all over town. These checks would then be brought to the proof department, where they'd be run through the micro-machine to read the bank's routing and account numbers. Those are the little digits printed at the bottom of your checks. An operator would then key the dollar amount into the bank's mainframe computer which in turn communicated with the issuing bank to verify the transaction. From here, the checks would be microfilmed, and the films would be archived. The paper checks themselves would then go to the Federal Reserve Bank for clearing and return. Today's emerging model is much smoother and quicker. A specialty scanner at the teller's window is used to image the check right there at the first point of customer contact, and the image is immediately stored away. The scanner reads the microcode and the amount, and electronically communicates with the issuing bank for verification. Boom. Done. No more courier. No more proof department. No more microfilm. And thanks to Check 21, the Check Clearing for the 21st Century Act, the paper check itself is no longer even needed, not even by banks, which increasingly are letting customers use their cell phone cameras to image and submit the checks they're depositing. Pretty amazing. The point of this story is that moving the scanner to the start of the process shortens the process itself and changes the way the information is being managed, an effect that can be seen in pretty much any process that involves almost any kind of information. Now, not every example is as dramatic as this one is, but the dynamic it illustrates really shows how interconnected process and information really are. It also highlights another interesting truism which is that an organization's technology can shed light on what its processes are, an especially important fact for those times when no one really knows how things work, <laughs> only that they just do. Let's see what we can discern from our old-time banking example. Looking purely at the technologies involved and the purposes they serve, we see a courier used for transport, micro-readers for data extraction, key from paper for information capture, and microfilm for archiving purposes. Today, we might find something different. A scanner for data extraction and information capture, the internet for transport, and an image repository for archiving. From a process standpoint, both scenarios indicate that information is being sent from the branches to a central location, critical account metadata is being automatically identified and entered, critical transaction information is being captured, and the source document is being preserved. Now, if this doesn't sound like a business process, then I don't know what does. And it can all be derived, at a high level anyway, from the arrangement of the technologies being used. This module has reviewed the tight relationship that exists between process and information. We use a check deposit processing example to illuminate the point, and we then turned it on its edge to see how the basic process could be abstracted by looking at the technology in use and piecing the story together by understanding the functions being performed. With this now behind you, 
you may wish to review the section that discusses various process analysis techniques. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org certification. Thank you.